Welcome to Longwood Gardens. I'm Emily Moody and this is the Longwood Organ. Enjoy this behind the scenes tour by Jonathan Ambrosino, a member of our restoration team and one of our ongoing curators. This massive instrument is the grandest expression of the love of music of Longwood's founder, Pierre S. DuPont. While this love of music was wide ranging, it was the pipe organ for which Mr. DuPont had a particular fondness. His mother had been a church organist, and in his first home, Mr. DuPont owned a parlor pump organ with a role player. When Mr. DuPont created Longwood's Conservatory, he soon ordered a pipe organ to provide music. Built by the Aeolian Company of New York, this organ was ready in 1921. The instrument was housed in the northeast corner of the exhibition hall, just outside the current ballroom. Like most Aeolian organs, the one for Longwood could be played in the normal manner from the keyboards by an organist, or automatically from paper rolls like those in a player piano. But Mr. DuPont was accustomed to hearing and enjoying live music. To try out his new instrument, Mr. DuPont invited some of the period's best organists to play Sunday afternoon concerts. These were elegant occasions, hors d'oeuvres and drinks, dozens of family and friends present. In 1924, Mr. DuPont found a musician he wanted to hear every week. Furman Swinnen, a Belgian-born virtuoso. And for the next 32 years, Mr. Swinnen would play most of the Sunday afternoon concerts at Longwood, more than 1,500 in all. Mr. DuPont was never entirely satisfied with this first organ. In 1923, two years after the organ had arrived, he had 1,300 pipes added. In 1924, he had Aeolian move the console from the exhibition hall into a new music room. But this arrangement robbed the organ of some of its power. So in 1926, 10 sets of pipes were replaced with louder ones. But in 1929, Mr. DuPont decided to build a new ballroom and with it, a new organ twice the size of the existing one. With 10,010 pipes, it was the largest pipe organ the Aeolian Company had ever built, or would ever build, by any measure an immense instrument. When you're seated in the ballroom, it isn't immediately obvious what lives behind this innocent looking wall of brocade. Part musical instrument and part complex machine, the pipes occupy a chamber that starts below the ballroom's floor level and reaches above its glass ceiling. A 60 horsepower blower provides most of the pressurized air. A second 10 horsepower machine raises that wind to even higher pressures for the loudest trumpet stops. The largest of the 10,010 pipes is 32 feet tall. It's one of five such stops that shake the room either with a subtle purr or a thunderous roar. The pipes are controlled by 22,000 valves, each one made of between four and 11 pieces, totaling more than 200,000 valve parts. The console too has thousands of individual mechanisms. In total, the organ weighs 110,000 pounds or 55 tons. Staff organists have included Furman Swinnen, Longwood's first resident organist, who held that position from 1923 to 1956. Clarence Snyder became Longwood's resident organist in 1956, a title he held until retiring in 1978. In 2012, Peter Richard Conti was named principal organist, the first residence organist here at Longwood since 1978. Today, guests to the gardens can hear performances recorded on the Longwood organ. The performance itself is captured live, 
and in playback, you hear the actual pipes playing. The visualizer represents all of the actions of the organ while the music plays. More than half of the organ's 10,010 pipes can be seen from Longwood's Organ Museum. This room is open to garden guests and invites you to learn the history of the instrument and something of how it all works. Behind these two-inch thick glass windows are 5,360 of the Longwood organ's 10,010 pipes. Upstairs and out of view, an additional four rooms contain the remaining 4,650 pipes, together with a number of percussions. The pedal division contains the largest bass pipes. These are played by the organist's feet. These pipes produce bass tones of such depth and power as to literally shake the building. Longwood's pedal is divided at either end of the space. At this east end, the 372 pipes have both soft and loud options. The biggest are 32 feet long, and the loudest is a 32-foot contrabombard. It sounds almost like a large helicopter. Next in line is the choir division, with its 1,643 pipes, divided into 23 individual stops. This is a group of milder voices with beautiful flute-toned stops. Several made of wood, one that's even triangular in shape. Other stops are meant to evoke orchestral instruments, such as the clarinet or the trumpet. The most unusual voice here is the saxophone, whose pipes are shaped like a trumpet's bell. The choir division is controlled from the bottom keyboard on the console. The great division provides the foundation tone around which all the other sounds of the organ are built. It has 1,741 pipes, divided into 21 sets of pipes, and it's played from the console's second keyboard. Next we come to the string organ, which is an unusual group of pipes found only in the very largest instruments. Here, every one of the 1,460 pipes is meant to evoke just one tone color, that of an orchestra's string section, and suggesting of violins, violas, and cellos. The sense of breadth and warmth is enhanced by having about half the pipes slightly and intentionally out of tune, which creates a shimmering effect with those pipes that are properly in tune. The string is a floating division, this means that it can be played at will from any of the console's four keyboards or the pedals. Something you don't expect to see inside a pipe organ is a concert grand piano. And yet, here is one. A nine-foot Weber model with a mechanism that allows it to be played just like any other stop. In fact, when the piano is played from the organ console, the keys on the piano move. And finally, we come to the rest of the pedal. These 180 pipes constitute one of the most impressive displays of large organ pipes anywhere. One authority calls it the Alps. The largest pipe on the far right corner is 32 inches by 28 inches by 32 feet tall. It's formed from boards of California sugar pine that are three inches thick. That one pipe alone weighs more than a thousand pounds and its low C pitch of 16 hertz produces an almost earthquake-like sensation. Directly beneath us in the basement is the blower room. Look at this amazing machine generating the wind. It's as tall as a human being and is driven by a 60 horsepower electric motor. In the distance, you can see a smaller 10 horsepower blower. That machine takes wind from the big blower and boosts it to an even higher pressure for the loudest pipes. In 2005, the original 1929 layout of all of this equipment was reconfigured and the motors, fans, and reservoirs were entirely rebuilt. Just as we cultivate plant specialties here at Longwood, we hope to cultivate young organ-playing talent. 
To that end, in 2013, we held the first Longwood Gardens International Organ Competition, which offered young organists a potential cash prize of $40,000. Every three years, the organ world's brightest young talents are invited to compete in this picturesque setting. As an extension of the competition, we established the Longwood Organ Academy, a summer study session that provides college students the opportunity to study the style of playing specific to this organ with renowned international organ professors. Longwood Gardens has a robust performing arts series. Over the years, we have presented performers from around the world. From the days of Mr. DuPont hosting John Phillips' Sousa, to Martha Graham, to the present, where we have presented Yo-Yo Ma, to the Beach Boys, to the Philadelphia Orchestra. Of particular note to the Longwood organ, the famous 20th century American classical composer, Samuel Barber, wrote his piece to Longwood Gardens when he was only 15 years old he dedicated it to Mr. and Mrs. DuPont as a thank you for all the concerts he had attended here. And now I invite you to hear this magnificent instrument. Longwood's principal organist, Peter Richard Conti, will demonstrate. Hello and welcome to Longwood Gardens. My name is Peter Richard Conti. I'm principal organist here at Longwood and also grand court organist of the Wanamaker Organ in Macy's, Center City, Philadelphia. And this is the Longwood organ. That's quite a sound as you can hear. This organ was built in 1929 and 1930 by the Aeolian Organ Company from Garwood, New Jersey. It is one of the last great symphonic organs from that period. The organ has over 10,000 pipes, 10,010 to be exact. It weighs 55 tons. Pipes range in size from about the size of a pencil or my little finger to over 32 feet in length. And here's what those extremes sound like. Here's some pipes that are about the size of a pencil. And here are some pipes that are quite literally the size of trees. Those stand 32 feet in length. Those are wood and metal pipes, uh, flue pipes. Here are some pipes that sort of sound like a, an overgrown bullfrog. Also 32 feet long, that's the bombard. There are two ways to control volume on a pipe organ. You can add stops by hand to make the organ louder, or I can control the volume using Venetian blinds, which you cannot see, but there's large wooden Venetian blinds behind the fabric, and I can shut down the entire organ like a caged tiger and make a crescendo using those Venetian blinds. They're controlled by these large gas pedals on the floor. The organ is designed to have various sets of pipes within rooms or chambers, and each of these keyboards controls a certain room of pipes. The choir organ is the quietest of the, of the divisions. The lowest keyboard. The great organ is sort of the, the meat of the instrument. The swell organ also has that incredible ability to growl like that, but as I uh, should say, the some divisions don't have a home base. The string organ, the fanfare organ, and the percussion organ float anywhere I like. And here is the string organ, which is one of the real prides of this instrument. The 
which I've put onto the swell keyboard. The solo organ, as you'd imagine, has solo voices. Here is a clarinet. And there are many more voices up there as well. And last but not least is the pedal board for my feet, which is an, a, just a very large keyboard played by my feet. And that controls the low end of the orchestra, the double basses and the tubas. So to control sounds, I can grab things by hand, but to make instantaneous changes, the organ is equipped with things called pistons, both under the keyboards, these numbered buttons, and also on the feet. And I can set those up in advance to control quick changes of sounds. Very useful when you're busy doing 10 things at once and have to make an instantaneous sound change. The organ has several families of pipes. The, the main organ tone, if you will, is called the diapason. Very, very churchy sounding. The organ also has uh, basically an orchestral palette at its disposal. Here's some lovely flutes. As I mentioned, this incredible string organ. Some wonderful color reaches an English horn, a French horn, and even a tuba. In addition to classical organ tone, this organ also has percussions that would have been found on theater organs from the 1920s and 30s to accompany silent films. Everything, tambourine, castanets, triangles, snare drums, bass drum, cymbals. There's even a grand piano. And a gong. Those are all real instruments. There's no speakers of any kind. Those are actual instruments that are being played. This organ with this incredible tonal palette is really wonderful for orchestral transcriptions, which Pierre Dupont was especially fond of. The organ at one point had an automated role player with old rolls that were punched paper. Now we have a computer that not only plays those old rolls, but also records live performances for playback. Thanks for listening. I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration and have a wonderful day here at Longwood Gardens. I hope you've enjoyed this tour. For more information about the Longwood Organ and Longwood Gardens, please visit our website at longwoodgardens.org. Thank you.